the entrance antiphon. In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who gave St. Anthony of Padua to your people as an outstanding preacher and an intercessor in their need. Grant that with his assistance, as we follow the teachings of the Christian life, we may know your help in every trial. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, the Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer. Naboth the Jezreelite had made to him, I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange but he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, a fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. <clears throat> so she wrote letters in Ahab's name and having sealed them with his seal, Set them to the, sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth. This is what she wrote in the letters. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. Next, get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king. And then take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwelt in his city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing. 
through the letters she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation, Naboth has cursed God and king. And they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. And when Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive, but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. The word of the Lord. Lord, listen to my groaning. Hearken to my words, O Lord. Attend to my sighing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. At dawn, I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, Turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. So as you realized last week, our diocesan clergy, they were all on retreat. This next week, the Norvatines are going to be on retreat. So I can speak on behalf of the confreres in the rectory that we are all going to miss you so much next week as we are at the Abbey drinking our ice cold iced tea. I don't know if they even serve that anymore. But, of course, I am the first to tell you that, you know what makes a good retreat master? Someone who gets out of the way. That way, people will be led directly to our Lord. That's what a retreat master, Father Luke, Lysinger, I believe, was his name. That's what he said to us. And Father Luke 
was the retreat master for the diocesan priest last week. He's a very learned Benedictine monk, but it's his sanctity. That's why we invite people to give retreats, is because of their holiness in addition to their um, erudite ways. Now, of course, Father Luke gave us the retreat, I believe it was back in 2019 at the Abbey, and I recalled from his conferences, being that he's a medical doctor, he has an MD, he focused heavily on things like mental health, and then he gave an example that still I can still recall to this day. He was quoting from a French existentialist philosopher. His name would have been John Paul Sartre, who wrote this play called No Exit. And in it, he described three individuals who have been condemned to hell. And there in the play, they were put in a room together. Eventually, as you can gather, they, they started really tormenting each other. And at the end, one, one of them said the line that you are all familiar with, that hell is the other person. Hell is your neighbor, something like that. And of course, that could be misinterpreted. It basically, I'm not going to go into details into the play, but it speaks to the fact that we are confined or we are limited by other people's apprehension of us, their perception of us, that that's, that is something that we are confined or limited by. And whereas you and I are the first to say that, no, your neighbor is not your problem. And that was the case in the first reading. In fact, you look at the example of St. Anthony of Padua. What did he do for his neighbor? He joined the Franciscans after having joined the Augustinians because he wanted to go and to preach to the Saracens, the Muslims, to convert them. And that is something that, is, that we can all look to. In addition to the many other things that St. Anthony of Padua is well known for, his zeal for the salvation of souls is why we speak about him today. The other thing that you all know St. Anthony for, you know St. Anthony for, would be what? He is the intercessor of lost items. So I'm constantly asking St. Anthony to help me find my phone, my keys, or my wallet. Okay, those are the three items. And of course, you all know the backstory, right? St. Anthony having, he had a psalter, and this is before the printing press, so those things are super valuable, and a novice who was leaving the community took his psalter, and that left St. Anthony in great distress and sorrow and anguish, so he prayed that that young seminarian would bring the psalter back, that book of, the book of Psalms, and it was a happy ending, that wayward novice came back and gave St. Anthony back his, his favorite Psalter. Therefore, we look to St. Anthony for that particular cause. Whereas you and I recognize that St. Anthony is good because we can ask him for those impossible causes, you know, like someone's wayward way that they would come back to the church, for example. You have a friend, a sibling, or a child that is wayward, we ask St. Anthony to intercede for us. And of course, St. Anthony, and when I think of his life, it was his preaching that was so powerful. And his preaching, of course, is supported by what? His prayer life. And that's the whole purpose of a retreat, is one's prayer life. You speak out of the abundance of the heart, and so what you contemplate, meaning God's divine mysteries, that's what is going to allow you to be effective. So when I see my converse walk across the parking lot, I go, look, there goes a contemplative in action. Okay, can you imagine like Father Godfrey in his serene way walking across the parking lot? There go a man who has contemplatio and axio, contemplative in action. And this is very important for us because a retreat allows us to step back as the words signify, you step back so that you can 
refocus and find that balance, which is so important for all of us, because we don't want to just run around and, and just busy ourselves with activities. Our activities only have value and meaning insofar as they are assisted and sustained by our prayer life. So as we go forth this day, may we recognize that our neighbor is, is very important. We live in community. Therefore, our neighbor is someone we should intercede for, not to be looked at as someone as our rival, but someone to be prayed for and to be loved. And realize that the little deeds that you're going to do today, the little ways that you can offer it up, that the little things that you can offer up, that could bring about the salvation of someone out there, unbeknownst to you. And that would be something that St. Anthony would want to leave you with. In calling upon our most merciful Lord, let us bring our prayers before him. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to help her grow in unity and charity throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations throughout the world, may the Prince of Peace guide them in pursuing peace and understanding in times of conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick or hurting in any way, and we pray for the good health and speedy recovery, recovery of Mr. Lloyd Doe, who worked with Desi after his surgery, that he be restored to full strength. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the light of Christ, we pray for the repose of the soul of Anthony Barajas, for Stephen Hillis, and for Simon Nguyen Min, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they be revealed, may they be rewarded with a seat at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Ever-loving and gracious Father, we humbly pray that you, will, that you grant the petitions we place before you today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of St. Anthony be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on, as on the festival of St. Anthony, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we we make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony of Padua, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servants Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May your holy gifts, which we have received, fill us with life, O Lord, so that we who rejoice in commemorating St. Anthony of Padua may also profit from his example of apostolic virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as you know, next week we have a priest um, filling in for all the masses, the same priest that was here last year. And then another announcement is this Friday, there is that epic, another basketball game between the priests of the diocese versus their seminarians. And yet, whatever, for whatever reason, they invited Father Brendan and me to come out. And that's at Modern Day High School. I think they have food and refreshments starting at 5. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. And Father Brendan is like the, the, the Kevin Durant or LeBron James of basketball, so he'll be fine. Whereas, pray for me that I would make at least one shot, okay? Pray for a little dip, Father Damien, that he wouldn't have to eat too many humble pies. And, of course, we will be praying for you next week as we are on retreat. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, send to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, Seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now.